So I was at the Santa Barbara Hackathon recently representing Wolfram Research, and the booth next to us had a company called Group Gets, which is sort of like Kickstarter, but for the manufacturing of electronics. So they have these campaigns uh, to ramp up manufacturing for a particular gizmo, and if enough people commit to uh, buying that gizmo, then they ramp up production and make it. So uh, you can go to Group Gets and browse these things. And the thing that they had at the Santa Barbara Hackathon that they were showing off was their Pure Thermal One image uh, uh, camera. So they have this uh, little board that you can buy a FLIR infrared camera and plug that into this socket here. It's powered by an STM32 microprocessor, and you can essentially use a micro USB cable to plug it into your computer, and that computer uh, recognizes it as a webcam. And so I thought that we would use it today to uh, analyze a couple of kitchen pieces of kitchenware that we got recently. Um, the first one is this uh, Rocklet machine. So it's a, it's a gizmo that you uh, plug into the wall. It's electric. You put cheese into these little uh, trays here, and then your friends come over and you pour molten cheese on things. So it's very nice. Um, so let's see, where is that? So here's our Rocklet machine. It has this electric coil up here that, uh, that heats up. And where the actual image sensor comes in is here. So I have uh, above it looking down onto the machine is the, uh, is the imaging sensor. I just plugged it in. It recognizes as webcam and everything was great. On top of the, uh, oh, I should mention one thing that, uh, that the light, if I turn off the light, you can see that the web, uh, the, uh, the imaging sensor, uh, the IR camera doesn't really care. It, uh, it, in fact, the light that it's seeing right now is actually coming from the residual heat from the light bulb, which is an incandescent light bulb um, above the stove. So Anyway, um, I think that's kind of neat. You can sort of see in the dark. And anyway, so there's a grill that you put on top of the, uh, the raclette machine over the element. And I was sort of curious, uh, does that grill heat up evenly when you turn it on? Or does the element, because the element is, doesn't really cover the whole thing, um, does it heat it up sort of asymmetrically? So I thought maybe we could find that out. So let's see. I think maybe I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And... I'll turn this thing on, and then I'll turn on the grill. Turn this on high. You can see the element heating up. All right, let's snap this puppy on. Let's watch. Initially, the uh, when there's not a clear hottest thing in the frame, the IR camera, um, you know, it looks a little bit noisy. But once once it's clear that there's something that's hot enough, as you can see that as it's heating up, the grill is heating up. Uh, we're going to get a cl more clear differentiation between hot and cold. You can see that even the cable is heating up due to resistive heating from the from the current that's flowing through it. Okay, so in this part, I want to show how you can use Mathematica to analyze some of the images that we're getting out of the IR camera. So I still have my IR camera set up. Um, there's still the webcam that's showing you what's happening in the real world. And uh, what I want to do is I have these two frying pans. I have them in the fridge here so they're the same temperature. Um, one of them is this fancy all-clad frying pan uh, that we got from Williams Sonoma. And this other one is this kind of crummy old uh, aluminum frying pan. The, the, the all-clad one is stainless steel, but this one is uh, just aluminum that we got from, you know, Target or some Albertsons or something. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on uh, the, the, boy, uh, the, the flame sort of full blast, and we'll see whether they both heat up evenly or how quickly they heat up and so on. Um, in Mathematica, you can call current image to get a uh, whatever the current image is. So here I'll call it again. You can see my hand in it. And if you call uh, image histogram on that, you know, you get a, you get a histogram. Uh, and so you can do all sorts of computation with this, with this image here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially take one image every tenth of a second for, say, 60 seconds. And then we'll uh, be able to analyze the temperatures. OK, so here I go. So we're recording. Here come the flames. You can see them heating up. The aluminum one is heating up a lot faster. You can see that the handle on the side of the all-clad one is sort of cooling, has a sort of a cooling effect on it. Okay, so at this point we've taken some data from the infrared camera. It's of the form 
Uh, it's a list of pairs, and the first element of each pair is uh, the time that the image was taken, and the second one is the image itself. And we're mostly uh, worried about the image itself. We could do an analysis of the times and verify that the times were, uh, the images were all taken a tenth of a second apart, but let's just focus on the images for brevity. So the first thing we can do is, uh, let's see, let's grab all the times, and those are the first element of each pair, and all the images, which are the second element of each pair. So the images, uh, if you just look, them at, look at them like a list, well, you can see that here I am about to turn on the burner, then I turn on the burner, here the flames ignite, and uh, the, the, the pans heat up. You can see them getting really hot, and uh, the camera is auto-adjusting the exposure um, and you can see that there's a couple of places where the camera kind of glitches a little bit. Okay, so that's fine. So those are all the frames that we took. There's 600 of them. And we could also view this as a sort of an animation with manipulate. We say, I want to see the ith element of the images, the uh, variable is, where i goes from 1 to the length of that list in steps of 1. So here we can drag this thing and you can see it turn on and so on. You could even just have it play for you and everything. So you get your little movie there, that's nice. Okay, so let's just pick a, uh, pick a random image from the list of images. Here's one. And uh, at this point what we want to do is we're trying to analyze each pan separately. So we'd like to crop out the left pan from the right pan. And one way to do that is with this mask tool. We'll uh, make a little mask here. I'll drag this little circle out, and with this little circle here, then I can say copy as an image. And so then if I just paste, if I say m equals paste, then I will have this picture here that is all black pixels and these white pixels, and I can use this with like image multiply. I can multiply the image of interest by the mask, and I will just get the, um, the left burner here. And I can then say image crop of that, and it'll crop it for me there. So, okay, so I've already done that um, with this mask here, mask one and mask two, by the left burner and the right burner. Uh, here's the list of the two masks. I can image multiply the image by the left mask and get this and the right mask here. And if I do run it through image crop, I will then get a nice cropped image. I can run it through color convert to turn it into grayscale because we really just care about the brightnesses. And now I'm ready to do that for every single image. And so I'll make a table, which is uh, essentially a, a Mathematica's... Mathematica has four loops, but a table is, can sometimes be more succinct. And what we're going to do is we're going to image multiply um, the image I by mask M, where I and M, uh, I comes from the list of images, and M comes from the list of masks. So there's two masks, there's 600 images, so this is going to make like a 600 by 2 table of cropped images. So we're then going to run it through image crop and color convert and so on. So after doing all this big old command in this table here, the first element of is crop of the image, the cropped images is this one. Pretty boring because we haven't turned on the burner yet. Here's the hundredth frame. You can see it's just these a list of these two little images here. And with a little bit of uh, manipulate magic, we can make a nice little animation so you can see in a little bit better. Here's the black and white version of the burners turning on and equilibrating. Okay. So now that we have these, we can start analyzing the data in these cropped images. The first thing that we might want to do is look at the heat distribution. Are the hot, are the hot places on, um, evenly distributed across the, the burner? So one way you can do this, let's take a frame and run it through image levels. So what image levels does is it counts the, essentially it's kind of like a histogram of, it's a distribution of the intensity levels in the image. So this is saying there are 92 pixels where the brightness is between 0 and 0.1. There's 0 pixels that are between 0.1 and 0.2. 0 pixels that are between 0.2 and 0.3. This is all brightness here. There's 100 pixels that are between 0.9 and 1. Okay, uh, so for instance, if we were to um, take one of the masks and run it through um, image levels, we would expect to see that um, there are a bunch of pixels that are black and a few pixels that are, are white, are between 0.9 and 1. So there's just a confirmation that that's working the way we expect. Um, if we then take the last element of each of these pairs, so this 92 comes here, this 0 goes here, and so on, all the way up to this 100 goes here. Um, this tells us essentially the distribution between black uh, of black pixels all the way up to white pixels. So uh, it's mostly upper white and white pixels here, and the black pixels are essentially the 
ones in the corners. Okay, so now we'd like to, let's make, let's do that, we just did that for a single, for the hundredth frame and the second mask, but let's do that for every frame and every, and each of the two pans. So for each image pair, which is, uh, you know, this one and then the other pan, let's take the jth one, where the image pair will go through the entire list of the cropped image pairs, and the J, and J will just go from one to two, it's the left or the right, um, uh, pan. We'll run it through image levels, let's do 40 different levels, and then we'll take the last one. So after we do that, we have a 600 by 2 by 40 um, matrix, essentially. Um, where the, Okay, so here's the first of the 600 elements. Here are the levels for the first frame for the left pan, and the first frame for the right pan. So you can see that there's a lot of black pixels because uh, we haven't turned the burner on yet. Okay, so now Let's look at each of these uh, over time. We want to, we'd like to see this over, over all the different frames to see how things are distributed. Let's see. And I think this looks a little bit better as a density plot, so let's do that. Um, so what we have here is the, the y-axis, the vertical axis here, is the frame of the video. So here is where we turn on the burner. So we're waiting, 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 turn on the burner, and the, the video proceeds. And the x-axis here in both these, so this is the left pan and the right pan, the, uh, the, the uh, new pan and the old pan. And what we see here, uh, the x-axis is the pixel intensity. How many pixels were there um, that were, you know, sort of black and then dark gray and mid gray and then uh, kind of white and then all white. Um, and the color here, uh, the orange means uh, a large number of pixels, blue means zero, means very few, very few pixels. So what we see here is that initially, you know, everything is all black, and as soon as you turn this on, then the pic more and more pixels are becoming are becoming whiter. Are, this is this is the whole the pan is heating up, and so there's a couple of things that you can see here. One is um, that there is a large distribution of different colors uh, in the new pan that you see. That that means that there's a large distribution of different uh, heats that we that we see on, in those pixels, and there seems to be a smaller distribution for the for the older pan. By the way, you can see sort of these the the mark the where 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 the uh, insulation sort of been scraped off where the anti stick coating had been scraped off on the old pan. You can sort of see that here. This is a small population of darker pixels, but even though the pan is quite hot, most of the pixels are white. So the first thing to notice is that this band is wider than this band for the most part, indicating that sure enough, the 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 new pan. Um, actually has a broader range of temperatures represented on its surface than the old pan does. And just as a reminder, here's, here's our, our two pans, our, our new um, all-clad pan and the older uh, crummy pan. And you can see that, I mean, just sort of visually, you can see that there are a large number. I mean, it's pretty dark in here and it's pretty light out here. Whereas here, most everything is light and there's just a, little, uh, a smaller gray blob. And of course, then there's the, there's the anti-stick coating uh, missing here. Okay, so that's the first kind of interesting observation that uh, that that the, 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 there's more there's a wider variation in heat. You would hope that the heat would be um, even, would be the constant across the entire pan. In which case, there would just be one pixel, say say the thir thirty brightness level, that would have all the pixels. So this would be a single white stripe that would go up and down the entire thing, and everything else would be blue, indicating no other pixels, no other temperatures were represented. But um, that's kind of an interesting observation. Okay, the second thing is that you can see that the uh, that the older pan actually heats up a lot faster. You can see that that uh, that that this band here always stays between the you know the 15 and the 35 brightness level, and it takes you know maybe up to maybe 250 uh, 200 uh, frames in order to get there. So that's 20 seconds. Whereas here, by maybe 15 seconds, um, a lot of the most of the pixels are in the 30 to 40 brightness range. Um, so the the older pan heats up fat heats up fast um, and uh, spreads its heat around a lot faster. Okay, so one last thing to see. Um, so here's a let's make a cute animation that shows that shows essentially the same thing. Um, so if you take the image data out of this uh, this picture here, so you get a let's see you get a essentially a matrix of pixel values. Um, and so here's the first row of that matrix, here's the second row of that matrix, and so on. Okay, and if you give that 
matrix of pixel values to a list plot 3D, you get a nice plot that you can drag around and look at this. So this is the hundredth frame, the second pan, so the one on the right, the old pan, and here is the the listing. Uh, the, uh, here is a, a essentially a heat map, a heat surface plot of the temperatures. Uh, here one essentially means brightness of of one, so it's the hottest, whatever, however hot the um, the uh, camera scaled that temperature to. Okay. So, by the way, this business with the slash slash is just uh, Mathematica's postfix notation. You can, you know, that you could, you can do the exact same thing if you don't like the slash slash by doing by uh, composing function calls like this. So that's fine. Um, here you can you can uh, make a manipulate to see this whole thing in action. And here we'll just rewind it all the way and play it. And you can see the burner turning on and the thing heating up and everything. And every time you pause it, um, Mathematica will refine the plot a little bit. Um, now, one thing that might have occurred, you you might have noticed here, is that at the very beginning, this looks this looks kind of weird, and the reason is the y scaling is is all off. Um, we need some way we need to tell Listplot 3D that the y axis should always go from zero to one, and it shouldn't be auto scaled. Um, the other thing is that uh, yeah, we should also make sure that we scale the uh, the two sides to be the, as big as the 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 images. And so the image is a 23 by 23, and so we'll tell Listplot 3D to plot in the range where x goes from 1 to 23, y goes from 1 to 23, and z goes to zero, from 0 to 1. And so if we do that, um, and we can also do that with both the left pan and the right pan, then we get this image where you can see the, uh, the burners turning on. And uh, let's just pause at a certain point here where we can sort of in the middle, you can see that the leftmost burner, the new burner, has this, these interesting lobes as they begin to heat up, whereas the right pan um, uh, it, the, their lobes are less pronounced. The older pan, the aluminum pan, the, the lobes are less pronounced. And my interpretation of that is that these must be the burner flames themselves. And in aluminum, which has a higher coefficient of thermal uh, conductivity, um, the heat is spread around a lot more quickly and a lot faster. Whereas with the other pan, um, which is stainless steel, the heat from the burner doesn't spread out as evenly as fast. And that's consistent with our observation that it that uh, it, it doesn't uh, spread the heat around as well in the in the density plots. So anyway, you can see this animation sort of play up, and it's it's kind of cool. Cool. Well, that's it. So in conclusion, I guess what we did today was we looked at um, we set up an IR camera from group gets. Uh, we took some data for, with Mathematica from that camera, and then we analyzed it to get a sense of whether the uh, this new expensive pan is uh, is actually superior to the to the crummy aluminum pan. Of course, I mean obviously the downside with the aluminum one is that then you know if <laughs> the uh, if you're not careful with it, you're going to scrape off the coating, and then all hell breaks loose. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.